Welcome back to the Global Business Report. Now that the Nigerian Senate has confirmed all 43 ministerial nominees sent by President Muhammad Buhari, Nigerians have condemned the approach the National Assembly put out in screening the nominees. What troubles many is who has the critical economic positions as well as market sentiments towards this development. Joining me to discuss this and more is a stockbroker, Rotimi Pakaejo. It's good to have you and good morning. Pleasure. All right, uh, let's start with the impact uh, that the initial anxiety over the lack of ministerial selection had on the capital market. How would you assess that? Uh, well, I think uh, if you look at the traction in the uh, OSHA index of the market yeah. since the confirmation, and I think uh, the confirmation is not different yet mm. from when the uh, actual list was released to the Senate for confirmation. All right. Uh, so uh, there is nothing has changed. But just before then, the market had been on a downward slide. Mm. Uh, so far, uh, for the year-to-date position on the market, I think we had about 11.37% negative. Okay. And uh, it, it hasn't fared better. I think we got it good on um, uh, Monday. Um, but thereafter, again, we saw the market mm. going in the, the direction that they used to. So nothing yeah. has really changed. Mm. But what is going to... the uh, What is the dimension with which is going to change yeah. is when portfolios are assigned. Mm -hmm. So the critical uh, ministries that are very close to the market, mm -hmm. those are the ones that will actually impact more. So when we see the personalities that are going to occupy those positions, yeah. then definitely we know how further the market is going to react. Very good, which brings me to that uh, development. Although they're yet to be given uh, official portfolios, but what are your expectations based on the current crop of nominees you've seen so far? We've seen some of them return, and we've seen their performance. So well, how would you uh, assess this? I think um, to a great extent, yeah. what we need to ask ourselves is, what is the policy trust of this government? Mm -hmm. And how, is the, how has that imparted in the last four years? Now, for the president to retain, I think, 13, mm -hmm. and uh, done away with the rest, for him to have retained 13, mm -hmm. it seems there's value. And I think for those that are retained, I think to a great extent, they've really imparted mm -hmm. in their various uh, portfolios. Yeah. So are they going to retain what they were holding before? Are they going to be giving new ones? Mm -hmm. But the expectation from everyone is that uh, we've, we are seeing new faces, although uh, Nigerians are of the opinion that some of the faces are old. Yeah. Uh, but be that as it may, Somebody may be old and still may be able to deliver value. So when the portfolios are assigned, it definitely is going to uh, be the uh, changing metrics Very good. for us to be able to know what is happening next. Right. You, you mentioned the fact that uh, nothing has really changed uh, the period before uh, these uh, nominees actually came out. But uh, in terms of uh, policy direction, as you've also alluded to, would you say based on what we've seen so far, where is this government going? Has anything actually uh, change so far? I, I think we shouldn't also make the mistake mm. that um, it is the ministers that will bring the policy trust. Okay. The policy trust should be a product of the think tank of the president. So if Mr. President uh, with his think tank outside the cabinet, mm -hmm. as the case may be, maybe economic team to drive the economy and every other sector, then when they bring forth the policy trust, this is what we want to achieve uh, X, Y, Z in one, two, three, four years. Then everything becomes clear. Because that's you also determine how money is being budgeted. Indeed. But with the kind of thing that we are seeing right now, I don't really think we are there yet. But one thing I may want to warn uh, the present government, yeah. I mean the present uh, crop of ministers mm -hmm. about, is that um, to a great extent, they are the fiscal policy they should try as much as possible for it to align with the monetary policy. We have seen them at variance in time past. Okay. And we have seen the kind of impact that the CBN has made on the economy. And yet, we are not seeing the results. So if what is coming from the fiscal side is complementary to the monetary side, then definitely we're going to see a much better uh, output from this government. Right. And I think uh, that synergy, they need to work on it. And it definitely is what we, everyone is looking forward to. Talking about that synergy, uh, CBN has uh, rolled out uh, some figures regarding 
how to move the economy, as it were. And uh, we've seen, you know, regarding taxes and, of course, uh, other MPC, uh, you know, development, as it were. But what are your thoughts there? Do you think, uh, like you mentioned, will it align with what we have on ground in terms of, you know, being having that uh, connection between the CBN policies and, of course, those who will drive that change, especially in the financial sector? Uh, yes, because um, the fin uh, what happens with respect to that mm -hmm. is also what will uh, bounce back on the capital markets. Yeah. Uh, from what I can see so far, I, I can't see that reflection yet. Because, uh, because of the uh, docility of the fiscal side, yeah. we are seeing a situation whereby CBN is taking more of the responsibilities of the fiscal side. Okay. And uh, in terms of the various interventions, the interventions are good, they are positive, but I think if the executives have been doing what they are supposed to do, then I don't think CBN will have had much need mm. to do what they are doing. All right. So, but be that as it may, I still believe that the focal point should be for them to en ensure that their policies synergize. Indeed. And if not, then we're going to have a repeat of what we had in the last four years. And that will be disheartening. Now, in view of all of this, what would be the role of the SEC itself, you know, in maintaining uh, some form of uh, regulatory uh, and compliance uh, features as the, uh, uh, regarding the capital market, as it were? Uh, well, the SEC on the side, uh, in conjunction with the Nigerian Stock Exchange, yeah. um, in recent time, I've really taken a lot of drive to see that the market develops. But when you say drive, are we talking about innovation here? How innovative yeah, is, is the Yeah, innovation. Because uh, one of the innovations is the e-dividend mandate. Okay. One of the innovations is the dematerialization. And uh, those two alone go a long way. Yeah. But driving it mm. uh, on the side of the capital market operators, yes. uh, the, the expectation from that side has not really been progressive as it ought to. But what, so, what is the challenge there? Uh, well, the challenge is the reach. Okay. We know that uh, this time around, certain hiccups that are still very much in place All right. ought to be removed. Take, for instance, if a client or an investor is opening a CSS account for the first time, okay. then when he, opens, he or she opens such an account, mm -hmm. every information is provided in the know your client from the KYC form. Okay. Now, such information is uploaded on the CACS uh, platform. What we expect to do is that such information also to be released to the various registrars affected. Yeah. So that issue of e-dividend, uh, uh, um, unclaimed dividend, yes. will be a thing of the past. So if you are buying for the first time, you are buying maybe Zenith Bank or GT Bank yeah. or Dangode Cement. The moment they declare results yeah. and your name appears on, on the register at the closure of register, they're supposed to provide your bank details mm -hmm. to, that, uh, to the registrar's concern. Okay. So that in so doing, you don't have to fill any other form in order for you to get your uh, dividend. Okay. So, but that is not yet the situation. So we hope that uh, with the uh, kind of impact that NSC and SEC have been making. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will now become mandatory All right. for CSCS and um, uh, the registrars to synergize and ensure that that happens. So, because people buy shares, mm -hmm. they submit their uh, transfer form. Yeah. And it's only the transfer form that is taken to the uh, uh, registrar okay. with their signature. But the bank details are not inclusive. Right. So we need to include that in order for us to be able to do uh, what we need to do. Then in addition to that, okay. I think uh, the investor's education is still very much lacking. Indeed. And also coupled with the fact that investor's confidence have not yet been restored. Mm. So lack inadequate investor's education mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, a depleting investor's confidence. All right. So in the past, it used to be a situation whereby Broker A sold my shares, he didn't pay me money, I didn't authorize him to do so. NSC and SEC, they've done so much to bring that to the BRS minimum. Interesting development there. Yes, they've done so much right. in that respect.
So such cases are no more. Uh, uh, not that it doesn't exist. <laughs> was but it reduced to barest minimum? It has reduced minimum. to barest minimum. Indeed. So what needs to be done now is yeah. the aspect of investors' education. What has actually, okay on the part of investors' confidence? What has really taken us back is one we have not woken up okay. from the sleep that the market went to during the market meltdown. All right. People lost value. A lot of the thing, waiting, expecting that things will get back. It hasn't gotten back. Coupled with those that invested in, in the insurance sector, right. and those stocks whose value have moved from the 50 cover per value that mm -hmm. it used to be down to 20 cover now. So people are discouraged. But I think there's still so much we can do in order to boost the confidence of the investors. Very good. And all right, let's talk about specifics here. Um, yesterday's uh, primary market auction. What are your impressions there? Ah, well, I think um, for that, we, the, there, is, that there was response. And I think for the way the economy is right now, mm -hmm. that response is still very much acceptable. Okay. And then uh, we heard uh, about some uh, corporate earnings reports uh, also released as well. Do you uh, have any suggestions there? Ah, well, I think uh, for some companies, we've seen them doing well. Okay. Their EPS on the increase. Uh, we have also seen some not doing well. Like uh, a, a case like First Bank, okay. which is one of the six major banks Indeed. in the country. And uh, the, the figure they churned out is not impressive. Uh, we are still ha they are still having issues with their NPL, although they have reduced that by about 50%, from about 52 billion era to about um, uh, 23 or 26. Okay. Uh, they've done well in that aspect. Mm. But the, what trickles down to the investor has not really been impressive. All right. Then secondly, uh, for the other banks, mm. G GT Bank, Zenith Bank, uh, Access Bank, okay. UBA, um, um, I think there's still another one now. <laughs> All right. Now, for those ones, okay. they usually present audited half-year reports. All right. So what that implies is that the result will not come as when others are coming. Very good. And these are the ones that actually boost Very good. Uh, the market. And on that note, uh, Rotimi Fakai, your stockbroker, and of course a financial analyst, I'd like to thank you for your thoughts on the capital markets. Good to have you.